Hi folks, welcome to Blue and Gold Talk, the video on the channel. If you're new, that discusses, talks about whatever comes out of my mouth. This is the video where you play, I guess, my, I don't know, my shrink, and I just talked to you about my obsession with the Buffalo Sabres. So guys, I was thinking, um, and yes, I want to talk about um, a little bit about the week, guys. I had a very busy week. It was the anniversary of my mom's death. I was doing things. I don't really want to get into it. I just want to leave it there. There was things I was doing this week uh, and work-wise. There was things happening in my life that uh, were good and not good, you know. But uh, uh, the truth is, yesterday I had plenty of time to do videos, guys. I just I, I got hooked on I got hooked on a show. Uh, what's it called? Virgin River. I don't know if any of you have seen Virgin River. I'd recommend it, especially if you're fans of um, Northern Exposure, which for me is the greatest show I've ever seen in my life. I just, I'm such a fan of Northern Exposure and um, I, I, it was tragic that that only lasted like six years, really five, uh, really five good seasons, you know, of that show, which was an amazing, amazing, wholesome, spiritual show. Just loved it, you know, comical too as hell. So guys, I'm thinking about the, the boys. We're 10 days away. Right now, we're 10 days away from our first preseason game. And yes, I get, uh, we got everything coming up with um, the challenge coming up, the prospects challenge and all this, but uh, I'm, I'm more excited for the preseason, of course. You know, as much as I'm interested in our prospects, I'm more excited with our team, of course. And, um, you know, years ago, I talked on this channel about how the Sabres would have one day rise from the ashes. And I meant it. I, I wasn't making it up, guys. I'm still here. And I was right. <laughs> okay, so I was right. I'm going to toot my horn on that one. I was right. I believe I'm right this year. And guys, I'd be willing to bet my 50 years as a fan, this is going to be a special year. What, what's going to happen? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know, you know. Um, I don't want to say what's right for the team, what's wrong for the team. I just want to be a fan and brace for finally what I believe is coming, guys, is a good season where a lot of us can breathe a sigh of relief that those days are gone. You know, those days are gone. I think this will be the year that it really hits us, that those days of suffering as a Sabres fan are really gone. Unless, like I said in the, pre the, the, the last video, was, um, uh, you know, we have a step backwards this year. I don't think we will. I don't think so. I think we're too long overdue, guys, for, for good. We're too long overdue. And as the season approaches, I don't know about you, I'm getting butterflies. I'm feeling really good about this year. Really good about it. And I don't just mean because they're going to make the playoffs. No. I've seen them make, I've seen every playoff game in their history. It's not that exciting for me. <laughs> it's just not. Sorry, guys. I know for you young folks, it means the world to you. God bless you. Hang in there. Good days are coming. Good days are coming. And for me, it's, I feel like this is the year where I believe we're going to unite in, in the belief of winning a Stanley Cup. Because I know a lot of you folks gave up hope years ago. Rightfully so. Team was a disaster. Management was a joke. Um, you're never going to get me to say Murray or Botterell was a good GM. I didn't hate them. They sucked. They suck compared to Adams. It's night and day. With a good GM in place, he got rid of our best players and restructured the team into what it is now, which is a highly competitive young team. But what he also did, guys, the biggest challenge, was changing the culture in that dressing room. And I seen it years ago. You guys might recall I was talking about it. In my early videos, I don't suggest you watch my early videos. I suck. <laughs> I suck in them. They're no good. But one thing I noticed then, guys, was, was okay, they're coming down the hall and they're high-fiving each other even though they just recently had an 18-game losing streak. They're high-fiving each other. You know, when they snapped out of that. Here's a clip. Here's where we came from. Oh. 
Let's not forget that. Let's not forget where we came from, guys. When we want to complain and whine that the season's not going our way, because it's not going to. It's not going to go our way 100%. It never does. Let's remember where we came from. Let's be the most grateful fans for what we get this year, because we're close to something really special happening, I believe. We're going to come from that 18-game losing streak, I believe, to eventually a Stanley Cup inside of five years. And I believe that that will happen. We have the right pieces in place. We got rid of, I believe, the locker room cancers. I won't mention Eichel and Leonard. But we had to get rid of some players on this team that were hurting this franchise because they were making it about them. And those players have to be with teams like Vegas. They have to be. They have no choice. They have to be with other players who can win the Stanley Cup. They can't be the guys you rely on like a Tuck or a Darlene or a Thompson who came out of nowhere into superstar status all of a sudden. You guys seen it. I mean, a few years ago, we were like going, what are we doing putting Tage at center, right? I mean, I was for it. You guys might recall because I said he's big and tall. That's a, not a bad idea. I was hoping 20 goals, guys. Now I'm expecting this year, 60. I'll just say it. I'm expecting if Tage Thompson stays healthy, healthy this year with that shot, 55 to 60 is realistic. He has every bit as good a shot as Matthews. Every bit as good as Austin Matthews. I cannot believe what we're sitting on all of a sudden. We got rid of Eichel, Reinhardt, guys that really weren't going to get it done. They just weren't going to get it done in Buffalo. You know, they weren't. Uh, Risto. You know, that we had to trade out these guys, get back assets, restructure the team, get the team back on track, get the team respecting each other in the dressing room again, and getting the team loving the logo they wear. We had to do all that at once. It wasn't just, okay, we're going to try this year and contend again for the Cup. That wasn't what was going on in Buffalo, guys. We were coming off an 18-game losing streak with our captain walking out on us publicly, then making it an, uh, 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 as much of a mess as, as it looked like it could get at one point. And um, I can't blame Michael for what we went through. I won't. I won't do that. I won't say it was because of Jack Eichel we were losing. No, no, no. We were a mess as an organization. Come on. You know? But he had... If it was me, I would have stayed. I would have stayed. I would, have, I would have been determined to help turn this thing around. I wouldn't have bailed, you know? And people say, well, you know, you guys, this is what Vegas fans don't understand, but they'll say that we lost him because of the neck thing. He asked for a trade the summer before. Come on. He asked for a trade before he got hurt, Vegas fans. No, I don't blame him. No. I'm just saying if it was me, I would have stuck it out. I'm making $10 million a year. This team has put their heart and soul into trusting me. I want to make good on that, you know? So, but we're in a different era now. Players think it's their right to win Stanley Cups now, even if they weren't really, I, I guess, the foundation of one, I guess you could say. Just an added piece to one. It's like what Eichel did kind of in, in I don't know why I'm going off topic with Eichel. I won't drag it, but... I'm thinking, you know, what Eichel did is what players usually do when they're in the twilight of their career, at the end of their career, and you're, they're trying to be rental somewhere to have another shot. That, that's what they usually do, not at 25 years old. So, you know. But hey, look, it, has it worked out for us? Oh, yeah. Would I trade Alex Tuck for Jack Eichel? No chance. No. He's too much of a winner. There's too much of, of um, a, a positive aura of this guy since he became a saber. You know, RJ hit it right when he said things changed for Buffalo the minute they got uh, Alex Tuck. He was right. The minute we got Eichel out of town, guys, things turned in our... You know, we, it's kind of the family secret we don't talk about, but really, the minute we got rid of Jack, this franchise has turned around completely. Completely. Come on. It's not even close. God, Taylor Hall was a disaster of a signing. I think that was a rookie mistake by Adams, all that was. But, you know, he managed to get it done, you know? Let's not forget that. He was the most sought after 
UFA out there, and he managed to get him on the Sabres, even for one year. Just to bring him in to keep Jack happy, though. Wrong reason, wrong motive. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. So I'm happy with uh, where we're headed, guys. I guess, I guess that's why I'll call this video. I'm just, you know, we, 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 right in front of our eyes, these guys have rose really from the dead, this franchise is. Rose from the ashes to a team now that we are all talking about the future. Before we would talk about, well, we don't have a, a VP of, uh, you know, player personnel. We don't have, hey, we don't have this. We don't. We'd always be negative, right? This is why I started this channel, to combat that. But now we have this team that, my goodness, it's not just us that's excited about them. Folks, it's other fans. Other fans, other channels, all talking about the Sabres now. There's not very many Sabres fans saying, oh, well, it's Buffalo, ha, ha, ha. Those fans are like so in the minority, really. They're all drinking Bud Light, you know? <laughs> so. I'll leave it there, guys. All right, done for the night. I just wanted to share my thoughts with you about the boys. Ten days away. Ten days away, it'll be game day. You know, our first game day. So, looking forward to it. All right, guys, I'll try to be on tomorrow night. No guarantees. I don't know. I've got, I've got a Florida glue this weekend. There's all sorts of stuff I got to do. Try to be here. Have a great night, guys.